Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Al YouTube channel and I am back to create some cards with my December 2020 sheet load leftovers. I hope you'll stick around and see how I'm going to use up this paper. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and ring that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. I don't know about you, but I do not need any more pattern paper scraps sitting around my craft room waiting to be used because if I'm honest with you, they usually get recycled about a year after I've cut them up. I've stopped by in the past with some sheet load leftovers videos, but I'm hoping to make this a more regular series. I want to go ahead and use up these scraps while they're out and fresh in my mind. Let me know what you do with your scraps in the comment section below. And if you happen to make any sheet load leftover cards yourself and post them online, I hope that you'll use the hashtag, hashtag sheetload leftovers. That way I can come see what you've done. For my card today, I'm going to be taking inspiration from this Christmas card that I created for my No Spend November challenge. It's harder to see now that it's covered up, but in the background, I did a technique that I call wood plank flooring, where I cut little strips of pattern paper and lay them down like you might a wood floor. I decided that I would try this with some pattern paper. And since this month leaves you with lots of thin strips, I thought this would be perfect to give it a go. Now you will want to keep in mind the orientation for your card when you start to cut. Since my text paper is reading top to bottom, I will need to make sure that my wood floor, the boards go vertical as well. I'm not really sure right now where these cards are going besides trying out that plank floor. As I get into the process, I'll let you know more about the products that I'm using, but if I leave you with any questions, make sure to leave those in the comment section below. Let's get crafty! To get started, I brought in a piece of white cardstock and I cut it into four pieces that were five inches wide by three and three quarter inches tall. These will end up being the base for my wood floors, quote unquote. Then I brought in that large scrap of red pattern paper and I cut this into four pieces as well and this will be the mat for the piece I just cut. So this was five and a quarter inches wide by four inches tall. I brought in those scrappy strips and I cut these into sections that were two inches wide. I used the two inch mark to the left of my cut line just so I could push it from right to left and make that a little bit easier. Once those were all cut down, I brought in my Fiskars photo trimmer and each of those pieces got cut to one inch wide. I think with smaller pieces like this, using this little bypass trimmer is much easier. You might notice that the size and shape of these is a little bit more reminiscent of maybe tiles and not necessarily wood floors. Once I had those all cut down, I ended up with only four of the red pieces, so I decided that I would set these to the side and not use them. Those were my famous last words. Just like with my wood floor planking when I do it, I brought in an ink cube and I inked the edges of each of the pieces. I decided to go with Christmas Pine from Gina K Inks because most of the pieces, or all of them, actually had green in it. Off camera, I used my Xyron to put adhesive on one of the pieces of white cardstock. This will be what I lay my tiles onto. I started with the pattern and I put it about a third of the way into the piece of paper, making sure to align it right along the bottom edge. Then I placed one of the text pieces and then finally a green. Then I decided with the next row I would start with the green and then repeat the same flower text green, flower text green. 
Well, I realized about three quarters of the way through that I had way too much green on this and that I probably should have cut more of those red tiles. I decided to go ahead and finish the pattern out and that I would make it work somehow later. I guess I must be better at laying wood floor than I am at tiles. Once that card was filled up, I brought in my little scissors and I trimmed off that excess. Then because the cut lines had left some white edges, I brought back in that ink cube and went ahead and went around the outside of that piece. And here is take two. I cut more of those red pattern pieces and then I started the same process for the second piece except I went pattern solid, pattern solid and just kept that up all the way across. I was able to use some of the cut off scraps from the first piece to fill in areas on this one. I think you'll see that by the time I get about halfway into this that this was definitely a better pattern choice. Off camera I went ahead and made a third piece using the same pattern as the second and some more of the leftovers. These pieces then got matted with that red pattern paper. I cut and folded three off-white card bases and then I adhered each of the paper pieced pieces on top of these. For my focal point and sentiments, I will be using some of the cut aparts from the paper pad. I chose two cards that I'm going to stamp that larger Merry Christmas onto, and I will be using Gina K Designs Faded Brick Ink. Now because this stamp is new, I did ink it up with Versamark before I brought in the red. You'll see the other Merry Christmas stamp on that set. It stained a little bit red, no big deal because it still stamps okay, but I was going to see if this worked a little bit better putting that buffer layer between the two. Once I knew that would stamp okay, I inked it back up and I didn't need to do the Versamark again and I took it to my card. And right here is another oops! Apparently I got a little bit happy with my inking and I inked some of the edge of the stamp. So I won't be able to use this but I went ahead and cleaned that off and I stamped it onto the second card. I did try to salvage the first one with my sand eraser, which normally will take off little spots, but unfortunately this was too large and it was really digging into the top of the pattern paper. I chose a couple of the pre-printed cut aparts for the other two sentiments and I matted each of these with some of that off-white cardstock that I used for the card base. Since the cards were pretty flat, I brought in my big blue roll of foam tape and added some to the back of each of the sentiments so these would pop up off the card bases a little bit. Now this big blue roll of foam tape, if you've been around long enough, you know I love these. I have this in three different sizes and it is something that I get on Amazon. The roll itself seems a little pricey, but when you break it down like, you know, per inch, it's actually very economical. If you want to check it out, I will link them in the description box below. Today I use the 3 quarter inch width for my sentiments. I decided to add a little sparkle to the cards and since that season's greetings sentiment on the left had a little silver foil in it, I decided to bring in some silver sequins for the other two cards. I took a little time playing with the layout of where I wanted the sequins to go and when I thought I had those in place, I moved them just a little bit, placed a dot of the art glitter glue where it was and then I replaced those sequins back over the glue spot with my Marvy jewel picker. This thing has came in super handy. And here's a look at the finished cards. I 
I hope you enjoyed seeing how I made these cards using some of the sheet load leftovers this month. And I also hope you like to see how I turned some of those oops around and just made it work. Don't forget if you're going to share cards using your leftovers to use that hashtag on the screen. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.